Hey everyone, I'm Ryan, you're watching 60 Cycle Hum, and in this video, I'm gonna unbox a long guitar. A long guitar with long guitar horns on it. I've wanted one of these for so long, and I've been spending some time learning to play bass, and then Boss announced the Boss Bass Katana for bass. And I was like, this is it. It's time to lock it in. It's time to get a bass that I really, really want. And when the Boss Bass Katana for bass comes out, I'll have a bass that I'll enjoy playing with it, that I'll be excited to play with it. Not that I'm not excited about my other bass, but this is an excuse. This is an excuse for me to get the thing that I've been wanting for so long. This box is way bigger than it needs to be. All right. I got all the candy out. My kids will be excited about that. And they've got a great big box to build a fort out of now. My kids love it when I get guitars in. <laughs> I requested this from Sweetwater, which they were very generous and gracious to source me with. And they're going to source me with the uh, the Boss Bass Katana for bass when that becomes available. So, yeah. Thank you, Sweetwater. By the way, guys, Sweetwater has been amazing to work with. As a content creator, as a guitar YouTuber, whatever you want to call me, an influencer, even though that feels like a dirty word sometimes. Sweetwater gets it. Sweetwater gets the way people like me like to work. They make it really, really easy for me to get, you know, gear that I want to make, the content I really want to make content around with. Did that sentence make sense at all? They make it really easy for me to get the gear that I want to make content with, the gear I actually want to make content with. And it's honestly a beautiful relationship. So I am just so thankful that Sweetwater has been, you know, indulging people like me so that we can make, you know, the fun videos that we think that you will enjoy. They trust us to come up with concepts that we think our viewers will love. But I think mostly this one's for me. <laughs> I've always wanted one of these. Like so many bands, that I love going to watch live and admire and love the recordings have used Dan Electra Longhorn basses. Off the top of my head, the Surfer Jets, their bassist uses a Longhorn. Man or Astro Man uses a Longhorn, a very modified Longhorn, and there's countless others. It's just such a cool instrument. And it's short scale for a bass. I think they're a 30 inch scale. Do I have a tape measure around here? Yep, 30 inches, so same scale as my Gretsch baritone. There we go. Now, obviously, I don't have the bass katana by Boss for bass yet, <laughs> but that is on the way when they become available to everyone, really. For the time being, I'm using my two Princeton's rig. Turn down nice and low, so there's no danger of me damaging the speakers or anything like that. Or my ears for that matter. I'm not into loud amps when I'm recording at home. On stage, sure. Yeah, for fun, why wouldn't I? I wanna feel that push of air, but at home, I've gotta record for hours and hours. I don't want that, I don't want hearing damage. For the most part though, I've been practicing bass with something like this, the Fender Mustang Micro. Well, actually, this exactly. <laughs> I like to sit on the couch at night and, you know, jam along to YouTube videos while I watch Star Trek with the captions on. <laughs> now you know my exciting rock star life. It feels like it has a bit of a twang to it, doesn't it? I need to get physically used to this thing, get used to playing it. But I'm excited to have, in the near future here, a relatively normal, <laughs> a relatively normal bass rig for incorporating into, you know, pedal demos and stuff like that. I've been enjoying, you know, dropping baritone and bass parts through fuzz pedals and delay pedals and whatnot at the end of videos. 
and it'll be nice to have a rig that is a base rig, maybe not so much an everyday person base rig, but a base rig that I'll be into. <laughs> Long guitarists out there, tell me what you think of this rig that I'm planning out, a Dan Electra Longhorn and a bass katana by Boss for bass. <laughs> I don't know if anyone's actually heard the bass katana outside of Boss videos yet, so I don't know how much of an opinion anyone can actually have, but I'm excited to check it out. Ever since I got my first Boss Katana, the Katana 50, my immediate thought was like, man, they should have something in this product line for the bassists out there. Because it's just a smart design and I'm still a big fan of the Katana. I have a Katana 100 over here and I use it all the time. I never use it in demos because there's people out there that would lose their damn mind if I used an amp that wasn't a tube amp in a pedal demo or something like that. And you know, it was up to me. If that wasn't such a huge issue for so many of you people out there, then I would probably be using the Katana and other solid state and digital options in pedal demos. I just would be. Maybe that's on you guys. Maybe that's on my perception of you guys. Maybe I should just do it sometime. I'm just gonna do it. But I think bassists are more open to solid state in general. There's not a lot of bass tube amps out there, are there? The other bass I've been using is like this bigger arch top body thing. So this feels different to me. It's gonna take me a while to get used to it, but I already know that I like it. I'm already off to the races with it. So let's go through the features and talk about what we have here. We've got the Dan Electro Coke bottle headstock on there. We've got two guitar style tuners on it. I've actually seen people take the Longhorn basses and convert them to baritone by drilling holes for two new tuners right there and right there and they cut a new nut and you really don't need to do anything with the bridge. I think they replace the bridge with a guitar bridge and they convert these to six string and make baritones out of them. Which seems like a fun project. The frets feel comfortable but not incredible. I could probably clean those up a little bit with my little Stumac file here but you know. They feel exactly like what I would expect from a Dan Electro. There's no surprises there. It's got its signature aluminum nut, a rosewood or at least a dark wood fretboard of some type. I'm you know not sure if it's actually a rosewood or not. I'm sure it probably is. Fun chromy metal back plate on there. A lot. You know, I love that Dan Electro has stuck with the throwback details. That back plate. The textured tape on the edges, the aluminum nut, the wood saddle. They've come out with lines over the years that push more modern, but I'm glad that they have stuff that is still pushing back, recognizing their roots, giving you that classic old kind of vibe. It's got their segmented knobs here. Uh, let's figure out what's going on with those. I'm assuming this is neck volume. Yeah, so this is your neck control, your neck pickup control. That is volume. This must be tone. We'll roll back the volume on the bridge all the way. Plenty dark. Again, I have the volume on the amps really low right now. tone all the way up. And we'll isolate the bridge pickup with the tone all the way up. There's that twangy like tick tock sound. Well, I don't know how to play with something that twangy. <laughs> Yeah, it's 
got some bite to it. Try it with the tone rolled back. The knobs stick together a little bit, so you have to be a little bit careful with those. <laughs> Pretty big jump on that tone knob there. Now there's not a lot of range on the tone control across most of that, so it's kind of an on and off situation. Which could be fun. The volume has an, a smooth range, I think. Yeah. Plenty fine range on the volume, but that tone control, it is on or off. Let's try it with some fuzz. Yeah, that tonal shift really isn't perceivable <laughs> with the fuzz on, but that sounds pretty great. anyone complaining about me using a pick when I feel like it. I'm a guitar boy over here, okay? I'm a short guitar boy trying his hand at a long guitar and asking you to just accept whatever I need to do to make it happen. idea how that's going to turn out as a recording. I have a lot to learn when it comes to long guitar. I'll say that. But I'll say I'm enjoying this. I think the pickups sound different. They sound unconventional as far as bass guitars go. I'm sure. I'm sure of it. I don't have a lot of experience with long guitars but they sound twangy and bright, and maybe once the strings break in, some of that will go away. But I like the personality of it. I like the character of it. The body is actually extremely comfortable. Like that longhorn shape just balances on my leg. It's super duper light. Can I find my scale? I don't have my overhead camera set up, so you'll just have to take my word for it. Take the cable out, because that weighs something. Wow, five pounds, 14 ounces. I don't know everything about long guitars, but I know that's light and it feels just featherweight here in my hand. When I get really tweaky and start messing around with things, I'm sure I'll measure, you know, how the bridge intonates and stuff like that, which it doesn't, it's not adjustable. <laughs> so it is what it is. I suppose I could attack it with a file or something like that if I was having major intonation issues, but let's be honest. I'm gonna live up here in the money zone. I'm not doing any crazy tappy tappy stuff across the neck, and even if I am, from what I've heard from other long guitarists, 
the note you play and if you're in tune really doesn't matter that much as long as you're in the groove and you're on beat, which, which is something that I have an incredible amount of trouble with. So I really have no business <laughs> touching a long guitar. A lot of like slappy clicky sounds there. I'm wondering how much of that will dial out as I learn the instrument, as I break in the springs, as I bring in an actual bass amplifier. You know, I'm running through a guitar rig right now. So who knows? But I'm liking the thud of it. And I'm liking the feel of it. What do you guys think? Your opinion is important to me. Do you think this will be a fun addition to the channel to work it into, you know, pedal demos and stuff like that? Do you think it's too weird? You think I picked the wrong guitar? I don't care. I honest, I, I'm happy. <laughs> I'm happy to finally have one of these in my life. I've window shopped them for so long. Like before this channel existed, like a decade, over a decade, I've been looking at Longhorn guitars. Probably longer than that. I used to want one of the, uh, the guitar lens. One of the ones that's a six string that has like 39 frets or something stupid like that. I wish I'd bought one of those when they were new in store back in the 90s. But yeah, I'm stoked. I'm stoked to see how this turns out, you know, working in bass content on my guitar channel. <laughs> Anyways, thanks for watching. Huge thanks to Sweetwater for sourcing me with this and, you know, sourcing me with the bass katana by Boss for bass in the near future. Uh, Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe, dislike, leave me rude and nasty comments. Support us on Patreon. Buy a shirt if you're naked and stay grounded. Bye, everybody.